And we are now live. Do you want me to start or do you start talking? Um, I will take away the screen in just a second and making sure we're actually live here. There we go. All right. And yeah, it's six o'clock, so let's get going. So welcome everyone to Sound Bites. We are uh, super excited to be here again. I'm just going to get rid of the, oh, why are you not letting me get rid of it? There it is. Okay. Um, there we go. Now we're good. Super excited this evening to welcome uh, Kim June Johnson for a rare well, performance. So thank you very much for joining us. And on behalf of Comox Valley Arts, I welcome you to this uh, weekly offering. Thank you and for having super, me. Super excited to have you. We'd like to acknowledge with gratitude that we are broadcasting from the unceded traditional territory of the Comox First Nation tonight, as with everything else we do. Um, we also would need to thank the BC Arts Council and the province of BC for their support in making this project possible. Tonight's performer, Kim June Johnson, is a singer, songwriter, and poet from the Comox Valley. During the pandemic, she restored an old vegetable garden and started writing new material on a newly purchased vintage piano. She has been the recipient of a Vancouver Island Music Award, and her recent and fourth album, A Thousand Things, is a collection of folk-based songs, tiny stories rife with coastal images and people, and features the lush string arrangements of com composer Adrian Dolan. If you have any questions during the performance, feel free to post them in the chat, and I'll relay them to Kim. And with those, without further ado, Kim June Johnson. Did you call my album Four Thousand Things? A Thousand Things. Fourth album, okay. A Thousand Things. Good. I thought I heard Four Thousand Things. I was, I was like, it's not that many things. <laughs> it's my poor enunciation. I just thought I would play um, songs off all of my records today. Just keep it simple. This new technology is a lot to think about. This is my first live stream, and I'm so glad that we got it all nailed down because now I can do more. So I'm just gonna keep it simple tonight, play some songs off my records. And this is called uh, Next Three Days. It's an early summer day till Wednesday you're away and I'm watching the roses bloom. The hair and it keeps flying by crossing above the telephone wires and I think it's a sign that something's coming soon He waved as he rode away gonna ride all my wrongs the next three days Spring was mostly clouds and rain and all the days just blurred away and I'm sorry I forgot to say thank you but all I need is one good sleep and the clouds will clear away in me and then I'll know exactly what to do Oh 
Well, I have to say uh, thank you to Comox Valley Arts for inviting me tonight. And thank you so much to my good friend, Ted Tanner from Hornby Island, who helped me set up this little sound system here that I'm using. I hope it sounds okay out there. I can't actually see anybody's comments right now because I can just see the performance screen, but I'll read them after. Um, yeah, missing my cello player, Jordy Robinson uh, these days. And I think that we'll probably organize um, a live stream probably next with him. And I also tried to hook up my old, I got this beautiful old vintage piano in my living room that I'm just dying to, to do a show on. So once we figure out the logistics of that, um, we'll be doing something with a piano as well. So, all right, what should we do now? It's a little song about missing a place. There are any Winnipeg friends watching tonight. You will know this city, you will know the street in the song. This is called Windows. It is winter in the prairies of snow across the lawns I am thinking of the summer when we walked on Corridon Did we stumble? Did we falter? Did we never learn the way? It is snowing It is blowing I can Hey, 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 hey,
want to sing along there, you can. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. So Kara, I'm going to turn down my main volume because it's telling me that it's like going too high and I don't know what you're getting on your end, if it's cutting out or anything like that. For some reason, vocals are getting a bit too loud. They're getting a little distorted. Okay, so I'm turning down my main volume and we'll see how that goes. I was watching a live stream the other day of one of my favorite singer songwriters. I'm not going to say who because this the live stream was not going well at all. Like she couldn't get herself flipped from sideways and then it just kept cutting out and it's like definitely a learning curve going on there. This is a little song about um, last summer, a few summers ago, I went beekeeping with my daughter and was just sort of astounded by the beauty of the bees at this bee farm. And also equally worried about the bees because um, with all the pesticides they're in, and, and among other things, they're, they're in grave danger. And if the bees are in grave danger, then our food is in grave danger. And so that's my little plug for the bees to not use chemicals and uh, keep the bees safe. This is called the beekeeper. Now, is that coming through? I'm not getting anything here. I'm just tapping medium. The beekeeper said, look up and showed us the wind and flowers. He tore a branch off for me. So kind, still we stood back and kept real quiet, drowsy on the music of their wings. The beekeeper sent us home with a chant. Drip the golden liquid on our tongues. All summer long, the sweetness lingered on and on.
okay no messages from the top so i'm thinking that you guys can all hear me and it's not distorting anymore Whew. we picked this room because the light in this room is so pretty but it's also like killer hot in here so i'm pretty sweaty fortunately you can't, if I start sweating really badly or something, you won't be able to smell. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna do um, Blackbird Sitting on the Line. sitting on the line my lover is gone again and left me without a dime and just when i thought that things were going fine blackbird sitting on the line blackbird sitting on the line i was so cold to him i was so unkind he was the best man I thought I'd ever find. Blackbird sitting on the line. Tell me what do I do this time? Tell me what do I do this time? You're out there singing your song while I'm in here crying. Blackbird sitting on the line. Blackbird sitting on the line. I've been so careless, I've been so blind. I told him I was sorry, told him I was trying. Blackbird sitting on the line. Oh, tell me, what do I do this time? Tell me, what do I do this time? You're out there singing your song while I'm in here crying. Blackbird sitting on the line. sitting on the line now i'm so lonesome so broke up inside how do i get me a little piece of my blackbird sitting on the line well tell me what do i do this time tell me what do i do this time you're out there singing your song while I'm in here crying. Blackbird sitting on the line. Oh, tell me, what do I do this time? Tell me, what do I do this time? You're out there singing your song while I'm in here crying. Blackbird sitting on the line. Oh, blackbird sitting on the line. Can you hear that bird outside? That's the bird that wakes me up every morning. Okay, I will play my banjo. because it's a banjo and goes out of tune if you leave it alone unattended for three minutes i'm going to tune it kind of a weird time we're in right now um and it's not like we're all completely stuck in our houses anymore, like we were back in 
April, but can't really gather in groups, can't hug each other. Um, so it still feels really strange. And, and of course the whole thing with the masks, you know, just a lot of masks walking around and needing to wear them for respecting other people and for protection. And, and it's like, I'm not getting used to it yet. You know, it just still feels very odd. And I have to be reminded, like I have to remind myself not to hug people a lot. It's like a, a knee jerk reaction to want to hug someone that I care about. And it's hard to remember not to. Come on, G string. There we go. a little heartbreak song called All the Trees. We fell in love in the summertime when the days were long and the light was fine. We traced each other till early morning when I look at photos, we're always smiling. Oh, how I wish that I could turn back time. I would find us there in that summer light. Mother wanted me to marry for money, but I was marrying for love. Oh, honey, we were young and naive, and we believed that love could hold us in the roughest seas. So I got a white dress and you got a black suit and we went down to Old Saints Church on Broadway Avenue, but all the trees are bare now and our love is worn out. Winter came stayed too long and I think it's time that we moved on Ooh, yeah. could turn back time I would find us there in the morning light but all the trees are bare now and our love is worn out winter came and stayed too We moved on. All the trees are bare now, and our love is worn out. Winter came and stayed too long, and I think it's time that we. Ooh. 
Thank you so much. Those of you who are watching. Whew, it's really, really hot in here. How are you guys doing in your living rooms? I think that, can you see the glistening sweat on my brow? <laughs> what will I do now? Um, I think that I'll do a song called Hillary. This is about a woman who um, was in my old neighborhood and she was afraid to go out. She used to watch everything happening from her window and she knew so many things just from watching out her window, but made me wonder what had happened to her in her life that made her want to watch the world from inside. So this is a, an, I'm kind of imagining what her life might be like. I haven't played this one for a while. There it is. from the window watch as the seasons come and go watch spring turn to summer summer to autumn then to winter cold i watch the smoke trails from the chimneys up and down our road my lover used to light the fire while I stood at the stove. I watch from the window, first green of leaves on all the trees. Watch kids with their coats off, people out walking in the streets. Well, I know what time the school lets out and when the buses go. I used to put the kettle on when I heard him get home. Days they come and go, but some of them go so slow. with the sorrow and the ache. If I get the dose right, I sleep from twilight into day. Sometimes I wake in the dead of night and stare out at the dark. My lover used to find and take me in his arms. Everybody knows the days they come and go, but some of them go so slow. Everybody knows oh, the days they come and Some of them go so slow. Ah, 
All right. I think uh, I think I'm gonna get out this other guitar that is tuned differently. Kind of a chaos of instruments around here. I'm just gonna grab my strap. So um, over the years, I've been working on a series of songs about my grandmother and my grandfather, Fred and Winnie Johnson. It's kind of one of those projects that I might be working on for a very long time. Um, it's kind of part fiction and part nonfiction about their life together. And it kind of started out as war letters that they wrote to each other during the war. And I think it's kind of spread out to be a little bigger than that. Um, maybe I'll sing one of the war songs next on the guitar. Um, but this is um, it's a little tune about the, the, their first date. It's called Fred and Winnie Converse on Their First Date. And uh, the first verse is in the voice of my grandmother and the second verse is in the voice of my grandfather. And the third verse is in the voice of my grandmother again. And uh, so my great, or my grandfather and grandmother, Fred and Winnie Johnson lived in Trail, BC for their married life. And they had children there and they, um, they ended their lives there. They, pa they passed away there. They didn't take their own lives. Don't get me wrong. They died of old age. They lived well into old age. And um, one of the things that I always think about is that they, I don't know if you've ever been to trail, but there's this huge like zinc smelter right smack dab in the middle of trail of the town. I don't know why they built it right in the middle of town. It, I'm sure it made sense back when they built it, but it's down in the valley. And then all the houses are built around um, on the edges of the hillsides. So this smokestack that this smelter spews, it's just, it, it, it used to be shorter. So it used to just like spew this toxic smoke up and it wasn't quite high enough to get it out over the valley to disperse. So it would just sink into the valley. And when my dad was growing up in trail, he remembers that there would be an alarm that would go off in the afternoon sometimes that meant that you had to run out into your yard to turn on your sprinklers because otherwise they would like scorch in the toxic fumes. And um, it used to be really, really parched there. And now <laughs> someone was just telling me this, that now it's, it's actually very green because now they put fertilizer in the smokestack. But at any rate, um, the, sm the smelter is still there. Everything is green. But um, whenever I kind of, I, I, I get kind of worried about air quality and, you know, Wi-Fi signals and uh, chemtrails and things like that. And whenever I, I get kind of freaked out about those things, I think of my grandparents. My grandmother just passed away a few years ago, um, almost 94, never had any lung problems. You know, I mean, her skin wasn't that great, but you know, what, what, are, the, what are all those chemicals doing? Anyway, live to a ripe old age is what I'm trying to say. And my grandfather passed away a few years before that, and they loved each other um, really well. And uh, so this is called Fred and Winnie Converse on their first date. Ah, where am I here? Yeah. Okay, start again. Been a while since I've played this one. My last show was February 29th in Victoria. And who knew? Who knew? Boy, that was quite a rain last night. Did you hear that thunder? Tomatoes pulled right from their vines 
and the corn blew over. My sister's buried in a little grave just south of Oliver. We used to visit there on Sundays, but now we don't talk much about her. Sometimes for no reason at all, I think of how my mother used to place wild roses in the window. I saw you walking past the churchyard. I like the yellow dress you wore that day. The summer's been so hot and dry. If the mill would let me, I'd get away. When I was 12 years old, my father bet the family farm in a poker game. He's still out working in Saskatchewan and probably will until his dying day. I haven't seen my mother in a long, long time. I sent her postcards from the places where I stopped along the line. I'd like to have a little house with good light and a garden plot. I'd make some curtains and a tablecloth, take slow walks round the block. I'd greet the neighbors in their yards and maybe stop to pick a handful of wild roses for the window. I'll do one more on this guitar. This is called uh, Where Have You Been Gone? And if you like this song, Jordy, my cello player, and I have a little video that you can watch on YouTube. So feel free to check that out.
something tangled around you back when the summer sky was flame. You got lost in that light, you thought it was meant to stay. Something loosened around you after you left that place. Tiny cracks where the light pours in and across your face. And across your so much if you're watching if you're clapping double thank you that was fantastic kim thank you you're welcome so i'll keep going and do just a couple more songs does that sound good absolutely okay I'll do that song about my grandparents. I haven't done that in a while, but I could do that one. This is a little tune about my grandparents, Fred and Winnie. And uh, I used to rummage in their attic trying to find letters that they wrote to each other during the war, and they didn't really come up with much, but um, I kind of pulled some scraps together from different things that they told me and different things that I found, photographs, and um, started to work on. Just a sec. Oh. Started to work on a series of songs about them and came up with this, this one. Um, it's during the war. It's been going on for a while. My grandfather fought in the Aleutian Islands Actually, he was more cleanup crew in the Aleutian Islands. Um, he had to clean up the bombs and go into the possibly dangerous areas and, and disarm bombs. Isn't that awful? And uh, so 
in this song, he's been away for a long time. You know, there's always a chance that your partner won't come home, a lot of uncertainty. And so um, this is a letter from my grandmother to my grandfather. This is called Long Dark Summer. Watching the rain on the windows, watching the light on the floor, watching the kids on the sidewalks play as I lean against the kitchen door. The roses in the garden are all in bloom, but it don't matter anyway. I am here and you are there and you will own be coming home today and I dream of the day when I look up and see you coming down the road it's been a long dark summer here and I feel tired I dream of the day when I look up and see you coming down the road. Will you pick me up and spin me around and never let me go? Remember the day at the station when we danced out in the rain? everybody watched us while they boarded the train well tell me nothing's changed love tell me we'll dance that way again soon when you get home here next to me in this little empty room And I dream of the day when I look up and see you coming down the road. It's been a long, dark summer here, and I feel tired and old. Oh, I dream of the day when I look up and see you coming down the road will you pick me up and spin me around and never let me go sometimes at night when i get lonely i go and sit on the steps in the front yard and pretend that you were there beside me and the war is all done and the next summer has come feel the warmth against your arm and dream of the day when i look up and see you coming down the road it's been a long dark summer here and i feel tired and old oh, oh, oh i dream of the day when i look up and see you coming down the road will you pick me up and spin me around never let me pick me up and spin me around never let me Pick me up and spin me around, say you'll never let me go.
Mm. I think we have time for one more. So I shall do one more. Thank you all so much for listening, making this, making all of these online shows possible, which is so, so nice to be able to just, I'm really, I'm really loving um, Anna Tivill's live performances. Um, I've watched um, some Rachel Sermani performances that I really love too. Um, who else am I really, I was, I was at a Catherine, um, uh, sorry, uh, um, Oh, I'm forgetting her name now, so never mind. That's just insulting. <laughs> anyway, um, Side Door puts on a lot of great shows. If you want to, if you want to actually attend like um, a curated concert, that's a great way to go too. So um, hopefully, I'll see you out and about on the online uh, concert series. I'm gonna close with. Um, I'm going to close with canvas and clay and uh, fix my bass string here. Is there anything else important to say before I sign off? Thank you so much. Kara and everyone at Comox Valley Arts for hosting these shows, really nice. I did this concert or this song in a concert a little while ago and I didn't tell the story that went with it because I'm kind of tired of the story because I've been telling the story for years and someone came up to me and she's like, you didn't tell the story, that's the best part of the song. So I'll tell the story about this song is that I moved to um, Hornby Island a bunch of years ago and it was a very hard year and I was having a really hard time reconciling some of the things that had not gone according to plan in my life. And, uh, and I was kind of stuck. And, uh, and I went to see, well, I went, we had at the co-op on Hornby where I, um, I kind of split my time between Hornby Island and Courtney right now. So um, at the co-op grocery store, we have these like exquisite art shows all the time and they're all over the walls while you're shopping for produce. It's, it's quite amazing. And uh, there was an, a huge, um, a huge show of, of um, Anne Zielinski's art. And she does really, really big abstract, mostly abstract paintings. And I was so drawn to her work and I just couldn't stop staring and I got a little obsessed and then I realized she was local. So um, I phoned her up and asked her if I could come and visit her at her studio and see, just see her process, I guess, and ask her a few questions. And uh, she reluctantly agreed. She's kind of a private person. And so she let me come and she showed me her, she has all these like, um, I get, they're just watercolor papers, but she's always playing with mixing. So she has like all of these, like a whole bunch of just like little dabs of mixed color everywhere. I thought it was really cool, just everywhere, like all over the walls and all over the, the tables and everything. And, and, but she, her, I noticed that one of her paintings was half done and there were, there were a lot of like scrapes and, and layers. And, and I asked her how many layers she does on her paintings. And, and I said like, you know, four or five, you know, cause you could tell that they were thick and they were, there was layer upon layer. And she said, oh, oh, at least that's, you know, more like, more like 11 or 12. And sometimes I paint like a whole picture and then I realize it's not the picture. And then I paint over that and that's the picture. And so it was very meta metaphorical for me in my life at that time. And um, it helps me make peace with, with some things. So this is called canvas and clay. I think I'm, I need to go a key higher. It's a little low. There we go. That's better. This is what I have decided After thinking it over for a while Life's not meant to be a straight line even 
a smooth ride. I like paintings that are layered, dappled textures and blurred outlines. Sometimes the artist only knows what she's painting through messes and wasted time. In all these years I was worried by the errors I was making. All this time I thought I was missing every turn I should be taking, but maybe it's more like we're canvas on a painter's stand. I watched a potter throwing clay. She said, I know that this looks easy, but it's not. Sometimes it takes a lot of starting over to get the perfect pot. In all these years I was worried by the errors I was making. All this time I thought I was missing every turn I should be taking, but maybe it's more like we're clay in a potter's hands. Maybe it's more like we're clay in a potter's hands. I've been pressed down and painted over. Maybe it's more like we're canvas on a painter's stand. Maybe it's more like we're clay in a potter's hand. It's more like we're canvas on a painter's stand. Maybe it's more like we're clay in a potter's hand. Ah, thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. It really means a lot to me if you showed up today or if you're watching afterwards, that means a lot to me too. So have a great night. Thank you.